and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have a roll call, please. Mr. Zwicker? Here. Ms. Breyer? Here. Mr. Prince? Here. Mr. Person? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Mr. Coleman? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Uh, all present, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Jason. Moving on to the first item, we have a proclamation. A hey, proclamation. Whereas September has been designated by the President of the United States of America <laughs> and the Governor of the State of Washington as National Preparedness Month and coincides with the City of Renton's Ready and Renton Emergency uh, Preparedness Campaign, and whereas the City of Renton has experienced natural and human-caused disasters in the past, and scientific evidence indicates the city remains vulnerable to disasters in the future, and whereas the vision of the Renton Fire and Emergency Service Department is Renton, a city uniquely prepared and effectively protected, and whereas investing in the preparedness of ourselves, our families, businesses, and communities can reduce fatalities and economic devastation in our community and in our nation, and whereas staying informed is a vital part of responding appropriately to emergencies, and all Renton citizens are encouraged to participate in citizen preparedness activities and to review the Ready and Renton campaign materials at rentonwad.gov, and whereas Ready and Renton creates an important opportunity for every resident of the city of Renton to prepare their homes, businesses, and community for any type of emergency. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2012 to be Ready and Renton Month in the city of Renton, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Renton to be affixed this 20th day of August 2012. Signed, Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zwicker. I move the council adopt the proclamation as read. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Ms. Breyer. The council adopt the proclamation as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? The ayes have it. It's my pleasure to present this to Deborah Needham, who's our emergency <coughs> management director. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. I wanted to also let all of you know, I don't know if you caught the recent survey, but we recently had a survey that said we have two thirds of our Renton residents now have said that they are prepared at a basic three day level. Um, that's an improvement from a few years ago when this program was started. I want to challenge those residents who have not yet prepared to join the rest of the Renton residents to become more prepared this month, to take whatever steps they can to become ready. I also wanted to encourage people to consider going beyond that three-day preparedness. There is a new campaign um, in the region. You may be hearing more of it in the months to come. Makeitthrough.org is encouraging people to prepare for a week or two weeks. And so I want to encourage people this month, think about what you can do to make yourself more prepared. And thank you, everybody, for all the support you've given to this program over the last few years that I've been here. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. We appreciate it very much. Okay, next we have a very special presentation from the Return to Renton Benefit Car Show, Jim McZegian. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor. Well, good evening, everyone, and uh, I am representing the Return to Renton Car Show Committee, and we have members of our committee with us back here. Would you wave your arms, please? A few folks have been able to make it tonight. These are uh, an amazing group of people. I, know I say that every year, but uh, they continue to amaze me what a small group of people dedicated to a cause can make happen. And uh, along with our committee, the Piazza Renton Organization, uh, as usual, was very helpful too. They loaned us uh, equipment, they provide volunteers, and together uh, we got the job done. This year's car show was held on Sunday, July 8th in downtown Renton. It was our 22nd anniversary. Uh, we had 480 classic vehicles on display, which was about 100 more than we had the year before. We uh, barely were able to accommodate them, but we had uh, great people helping with parking, what have you, and uh, they made it happen. We estimated, uh, we used kind of the farmer's market technique accounting people, and uh, we estimated we had over 4,000 people uh, seeing the show. And from all we can tell, uh, including our committee and the spectators and the People have displayed their automobiles. They really feel it was a top-notch event. And um, 
I know we said this last year, but I got to say it this year. We think this year was the best year we ever had yeah. <laughs> in terms of all things considered. So I guess that's goodness. Um, we had over 60 local sponsors. That's a big deal. They uh, help us financially, and most of them you know, are so pleased to do it. A bunch of them ask if they can be sponsors each year. So we had net financial proceeds of $17,500, wow. including um, an allowance for reserves. Great. And, um, we really got great help before, during, and after the show from uh, Renton City officials and staff, as we always have. And each year, uh, you know, we meet and try and make things a little better. And we've got pretty good processes in place right now, and they're working. For 2013, we've established Sunday, July 7th, as our show date. Uh, we continue to meet every month, once a month, our committee, so mm -hmm. that we can make the show be the best show it possibly can be in 2013. At this point in time, we're continuing, we're planning on the same boundaries from Main Street to Morris, I mean, Main Avenue to Morris Avenue down South Third Street. And um, we always have hope that more Renton businesses, downtown businesses will get involved with us. Some that do find it very rewarding and uh, they also, um, you know, sell product and what have you. Uh, the other thing the show always tells us is what a great, park that Piazza Park is. I mean, it's really nice to have events there. And it's just great for our vendors and to give out awards and uh, our DJ. Um, it's a great asset. Mm -hmm. At this time, I would like to ask Police Chief Kevin Milosevic to please come forward. <clears throat> Very pleased to present you with a check in the amount of $17,500 for Thank the year. You. you know, this is such a successful event. It doesn't happen, you know, by accident. Like you said, this, this group meets all year long. Uh, they've got it down to a science, 22 years. Um, I think this, this Sunday was actually the first nice weekend of the year and so overwhelming crowd the weather was beautiful it's just a great event down, downtown and I think besides uh, the parade there's probably not another event in the downtown that has a larger population mm -hmm. of folks so thank you we'll put this to great work as usual okay thank you thanks Kevin uh, Jim, I just wanted to cite a couple of things uh, about this. I mean, first of all, I like all the volunteers to stand up. We really owe you a round of applause. <laughs> I don't know if uh, Jim mentioned how many volunteers that they have, but they work so hard to pull off this event, and it is a wonderful event. We have so many people that call us and talk about the fact that they have a great time going to the event. They look forward to seeing all the old cars. And more importantly, I think it's important for the public to know that over the past 22 years, um, their efforts have raised, I would say, better than 170,000. It may be closer. We don't have, we're missing a couple of years of figures. It, it very well could be closer to 190 or $200,000 that have gone to help the youth in our community. And I was just going to list a couple of the things that uh, have been the recipients. Rent and Parks and Recreation Scholarships that provide registration fee fees for kids who couldn't otherwise afford to attend some of the activities. Um, the National Night Out and the Renton Police Hoop Shoot Contest where they can it purchase t-shirts and food and drink for the kids to be able to participate. It's paid for the, uh, help pay for the Renton Summer Lunch Program where kids that don't have regular meals uh, during the summer uh, get a lunch uh, prepared for them. Communities and Schools of Renton that takes care of kids through mentoring and through the um, liaison groups and the different things that help the kids uh, that are having some difficult times in the schools. Uh, RAISE, which is the youth, uh, uh, Renton Youth Activity Group, Renton High School, and some of the programs that they've had there, and the Somali Youth Soccer Team, just to name a few that have benefited from the great contributions of our sponsors and the people who have entered the car show, and clearly due to the initiative of all these volunteers. So we really want to thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it. This is a banner year. 
uh, 17,500 is an all-time -time, all -time high, so we're really looking forward, Jim, <laughs> to July 2013. So thank you very much. We yeah. appreciate it. Great. Okay, so next we're going to move into a public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant funding recommendations. Karen, are you going to lead us through this? I am. Okay. Good evening, I'm Karen Bergswick, the Human Services Manager for the City of Brenton. I'm here to um, give a background for the public hearing on community development block grants. We're having a public hearing for the first year of a two-year funding cycle for 2013 and 2014. The recommendations are 14,000 goes to the Domestic Abuse Women's Network Continuum of Housing to provide emergency <clears throat> and transitional housing services to homeless domestic violence survivors and their children. $6,000 to Refugee Women's Alliance Case Management and Emergency Assistance Program to provide case management to low and moderate income immigrants and refugees that live in Renton and connecting them to needed services. $25,683 to the Multi-Service Center for to provide emergency assistance to low and moderate income Renton residents. $173,947 to uh, the City of Renton Housing Repair Assistance Program to provide health and safety repairs to low-income homeowners within the City of Renton boundaries. And finally, $45,777 in planning and administration funds to administer the Community Development Law Grant Program. If the amount of the CDBG funds changes for 2013, allocations will be modified according to the adopted 2013-2014 CDBG contingency plan. You have a copy of the plan and there's copies of the contingency plan and the funding recommendations available on the handout table if members of the public would like to see those as well. With that, I have concluded my presentation We'll have a committee report uh, to present later on on the funding recommendations for CDBG. Does the mayor or council have any questions at this time? Any questions from council? Okay, I guess not, Karen. Um, we do have uh, somebody signed up to address the council. Cheryl, is it Bozarth? Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, council members. My name is Cheryl Bozarth, and I am executive director of the Domestic Abuse Women's Network. And I've just come this evening to say thank you to your staff members at the Human Services Department, as well as the committee members who came up with these recommendations for you. Um, our agency services in the continuum of housing are just very critical for uh, residents from the Renton area who are also survivors of domestic violence and for their children. As you can imagine, in the last few years, um, affordable housing options have just continually decreased. And so emergency shelter and transitional housing services for victims has become more and more important as this uh, economic bad time kind of drags on. So I just wanted to say thank you in person, and we appreciate your work and your continued support. Thanks for coming down here, Cheryl. We appreciate it. Was there anybody else that wanted to address the council on the public hearing? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Zwicker. Would the public hearing be closed? Second. It's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Corman that the public hearing be closed. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'd like to pass on to the clerk uh, the signed committee report from Committee of the Whole um, that we discussed this topic earlier for those that weren't here uh, and then as part of this public hearing. So I think at this point we'd go ahead and present this for, to go through it and finish business. Thank you. Okay. Next is administrative report. Mr. Covington? I have no report tonight, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Well, moving on to audience comment. Um, we have a couple people signed up to address the council. When I give your name, would you please come to the podium and give your name and city of residence for the record, and you have five minutes to address the council. First is Michael, and I'm, just, I'm sorry, I can't read the last name, and I'm going to butcher your name. Or is it, did I, is it Michelle? Am I even close? <laughs> <laughs> Michael, 
<laughs> How are you doing? Um, I'm very nervous. Because, because, my... because I butchered it, would you please give your name for the record? <laughs> my name is Michaela Fellows. Okay. I don't have a voice, so I'm going to try to push this out. Um, I'm here today to try to address um, issues that I've been having with written police and try to figure out ways to um, find out how to go about um, dealing with them, not only for myself but for other um, minorities in this area. Um, I'm a small business owner. I also live in the city of Renton. I've lived here since 2004, and I've had a small business for over 10 years. Um, but I didn't know that I pretty much have had to have a curfew coming in because of every time I'm out, any time after 10 o'clock at night, I'm being harassed by the city of Renton, whether it be whatever kind of car that I'm driving or whatever. Um, many times I've been pulled over. Um, they request for me my license, registration, and insurance, and then either just let me go. Or they ask for my information and hold me forever. What I've been doing recently is calling 911 and tell them I'm being harassed because I don't know any other options. Uh, because I turned around and come a few times to the city of Renton um, downstairs to report different officers, and nothing was done about it, or they'll make excuses for them or say they're overzealous or whatever. Nothing happens about it, so I'm kind of frustrated. Um, this is my first time ever dealing with anything like this, so I don't know how to go about it, so I'm just kind of rambling on. So, Okay, if, if you could, uh, because I see you're, you've given us a Seattle address, uh -huh. if you could please write down your name and address on a phone number where we can reach you, and we'll, have, we'll have staff follow up on that. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. Next is Kay Lambert. Kay. Um, it says K.K. Lambert. I, s I think I saw him step out with Mr. Renner. Okay. Um, is, um, Jay, could you look in the hall to see if uh, uh, Cal, Lambert. Cal is out there? Maybe they're working it out. <laughs> he would like to speak at the final citizen comment. Okay. Thanks. Moving on to, yeah, thank you, Terry. Moving on to consent agenda. We have 10 items on the consent agenda for council consideration. Are there any items a council member would like pulled for discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zwicker. Hearing none, I move the council concur on the consent agenda. Second. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Corman. The council concur with the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Unfinished business, Mr. Zwicker. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the Committee of the Whole has a committee report. Committee of the Whole committee report. 2013-2014 uh, Community <coughs> Development Block Grant Funding Recommendations. The Committee of the Whole recommends concurrence in the Staff and Human Services Advisory Committee recommendations to approve the 2013-2014 Community Development Block Grant CDBG allocations. The following recommendations for public services are for two years, 2013-2014, with the second year being contingent upon agency performance and availability of funds. The allocation of funds will be as listed below. Community Development Block Grant Public Services. Uh, D Domestic Abuse Women's Network, uh, Dawn for Housing, 14000 Multi-Service Center, Emergency Assistance, $25,683, and Refugee Women's Alliance Case Management, $6,000, which is a total of $45,683. Uh, planning and Administration is $45,777, and it says Community Development Block Grant Capital Recommendation for 2013 only. City of Renton Housing Repair Assistance Program, $173,947. The committee also recommends adoption of the CDBG Contingency Funding Plan as recommended by the, the Human Services Advisory Committee uh, should the amount of available funding increase or decrease. The committee further authorizes the mayor and city clerk to sign the contract agreements. This is signed by the council president. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zwicker. Would the council concur in the committee of the whole committee report? Second. It's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, second by Ms. Breyer. The council concur with the committee of the whole report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. That was all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Ms. Breyer. Yes, the finance committee has a couple of reports. 
Okay, Finance Committee report utility bill adjustment. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to grant a waiver requested by Rivers Edge uh, Condominiums at the service address of 440 Maple Avenue Southwest for utility charges in the total amount of $6,986.75 resulting from a water main leak. The adjustment includes charges above the normal usage for city water, which is $1,120.17, city sewer, $2,144.05, and King County Metro at $3,722.53. This is signed by the committee chair and, and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. I move that council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, second by Mr. Taylor, that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. In the next Finance Committee report, convert two Public Works Maintenance mm -hmm. Shop storage bays to garage repair bays. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the allocation of $30,000 from the Equipment Rental Fund 501 to provide funding needed to convert two storage bays in the Public Works uh, Maintenance Shops Building D to two garage repair bays. The budget adjust adjustment for this item will be incorporated into the mid-year budget adjustment ordinance. This is signed by the uh, committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. Move that council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, second by Mr. Taylor, that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The final uh, Finance Committee report, approval of claims and payroll vouchers. The Finance Committee approves for payment on August 20th, 2012, Claim vouchers 313878 through 314709, two wire transfers, and one payroll run with benefit withholding payments totaling $5,900,701.86, and payroll vouchers including 843 direct deposits and 104 payroll checks totaling $1,701,705.28. This is signed by the three committee members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. I move that council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, seconded by Mr. Taylor, that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Next is Mr. Prince. No unfinished <clears throat> business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Person? No unfinished business. <clears throat> Ms. Palmer? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Corman? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. And Mr. Taylor? No old business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. So moving on to resolutions and ordinances, we have two ordinances for second and final reading. <clears throat> okay, the first ordinance for second and final reading regards extending the waiver of certain development fees for owner-occupied rental housing programs. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending section 41210, waive fees of chapter one administration and enforcement of title four development regulations of city code by extending the waiver of certain development and mitigation fees. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. I move this ordinance be adopted as read. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, seconded by Mr. Zwicker that this ordinance be adopted as read and requires a roll call. Mr. Zwicker? Aye. Ms. Breyer? Aye. Mr. Prince? Aye. Mr. Person? Aye. Ms. Palmer? Aye. Mr. Corman? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All ayes. The ayes have it. The second ordinance for second and final reading regards uh, extending the multifamily property tax exemption uh, program. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending Section 41220, property tax exemption for multifamily housing and residential targeted areas of Chapter 1 administration and enforcement of Title IV development regulations of City Code by extending the property tax exemption. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Prince. Move the ordinance be adopted as what? Second. Been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Palmer, that this ordinance be adopted as read and requires a roll call. Mr. Zwicker? Aye. Ms. Breyer? Aye. Mr. Prince? Aye. Mr. Person? Aye. Ms. Palmer? Aye. Mr. Corman? Aye. Mr. Taylor? Aye. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All ayes. Ayes have it. Thank you, Jason. Okay, moving on to new business, Mr. Zwicker. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a few items. Uh, the council meeting scheduled for Monday, August 27th, has been canceled. Uh, the next Monday is Labor Day, so there is no council meeting September 3rd. 
um, which then moves us then to September 10th, Committee of the Whole, beginning at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers. Uh, one item of interest, or one item of discussion, excuse me, impact fees update. That is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Ms. Breyer? Uh, yes, uh, the Finance Committee will meet on Monday, September 10th uh, in the Council Conference Room, um, 4.30 to 5 p.m. Two items, electric charging stations update and vouchers. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. The Planning and Development Committee meeting for this Thursday, August 23rd, has been canceled. Okay. Mr. Person? Yes, Mr. Mayor, for September 10th. Doesn't that sound like a long, yeah. <laughs> long ways away? At 5.30 p.m. to 6 p.m., the public safety meeting will be held in the council conference room. One top, actually two topics, memorandum of understanding with the Seattle Public Health to store an emergency preparedness container and emerging any emerging issues in public <clears throat> safety. Okay. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Uh, the Community Services Committee will meet on September 10th from 5 to 5.30 in the <clears throat> Council Conference Room. Two items on the agenda. Uh, the first one is Arts and Culture Master Plan Update. It's a briefing only. And the second item is the Four Cow Bridge Public Art Briefing. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Corman. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to announce a Transportation mm -hmm. Committee meeting this Thursday, August 23rd at 4 o'clock p.m. in the Council Conference Room. There are six items on that agenda. Northeast Third Fourth Corridor Improvement Construction Agreement with Puget Sound Energy. Architectural contract with SRG Partnership Incorporated at Renton Aerospace Training Center. Uh, third item is the Boeing Company lease LAG 10 01 to amendment number one. Fourth item, new ground lease with Boss Air LLC. Fifth item, six year transportation improvement program. And the sixth item is emerging issues in transportation. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the uh, Utilities uh, Committee for September the 10th will be canceled. That is all, Mr. Okay. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Next is audience comment. Was there anybody that wants to address the council? Yeah, please come forward, give your name for the record and city of residence. <clears throat> yep. My name is Cal Lambert, I'm a resident of West Hill. I have a business downtown. Um, last week we had some discussion about the library and I'd like to continue that if I may. Uh, the um, 10,000 foot level um, issues were the $18 million bond issue, the $40 million in debt on that bond issue, and the fact that the uh, ILA term is 100 years. That's enough to make us want to consider carefully to measure twice and cut once. And so. Um, the people that have been involved in the Cedar River Library um, referendum have developed a substantial amount of expertise on this project and ha have, in addition, a, a great deal of interest in attempting to harness that interest and expertise in productive ways. And I know that there are a great number of citizens in this uh, city who would also like to participate. So in listening to uh, Council's feedback uh, from last week, we feel that in regards to providing a venue for um, citizens to participate, and in addition providing some of our specific um, recommendations that we've developed, um, one very interesting op opportunity I'd like to suggest would be a, um, a board to be formed, and, and I have some proposed language that I'd like the um, council to consider. Basically, though, to have a four-member board in which um, three of the members are selected by the um, citizens for the Cedar River Library. One member is drawn from the city staff, and that four board would be authorized to um, um, interview staff, interview KCLS people, um, uh, attend design committee meetings between the city of Renton and KCLS, and um, make recommendations to the um, city council from time to time as we have relevant input. Um, we believe this would be a, a very effective and constructive way of doing what has been a long history of volunteering in the city of Renton, something that the mayor recently pointed out had uh, brought about $1.3 million in value to the city. And if you think about it, what the um, Cedar River uh, folks have done over the past two years is probably equivalent to another thousand 
or 2,000 hours of volunteer work. So if I may, I would like to present, a, I have 10 copies of a proposed resolution that I'd like you to consider. And if uh, we can discuss that at uh, the next meeting or this meeting, depending on how you dispose, uh, we can prepare to do that at this time. Okay, thank you very much. Was there anybody, uh, anybody else wanted to address the council? Move we adjourn. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Prince, so we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're Hello, I'm Dennis Law, Mayor of Renton. Summer's a great time for kids to read with their families. Reading during the summer is not only fun, but it helps children keep on learning. That's why I'm proud to support Let's Read, our regional summer reading campaign. Young children who don't read over the summer can lose important reading skills and fall behind during the school year. This video from our national partners shows how important summer reading is. Let's look at two children, one from a middle-income family, the other from one of the millions of low-income American families. As the two kids head off to kindergarten, look what happens. The middle-income child starts out with a six-month lead. The low-income child is already falling behind because of a lack of access to early reading and preschool education. During their year in kindergarten, in the same school and classroom, the two children will learn at about the same rate, so we'll move them both forward nine months. But look what happens in that first summer between kindergarten and first grade. Our middle-income child moves ahead about a month in reading because learning of one kind or another continues over the summer. The low-income child falls back about two months, so when school begins again, when they go back for first grade, the gap between them has already widened. During first grade, again, they move ahead at about the same rate, another nine months. That next summer, the activities and lifestyle of the middle-income family keep that child moving forward. But the low-income child has fewer opportunities to reinforce good habits like reading, and that child falls farther behind. Then we come to second grade, and again, our two children learn at the same rate. But the summer after second grade sets our low-income child back again, and our middle-income child moves forward again, and the gap widens again. By just the third grade, the two children are already far apart. By the end of fifth grade, the gap between the children is two and a half to three years. It will keep growing through middle school. So you see, without addressing what's happening during the summer, it is impossible to ever catch up. It's impossible to close the gap. No matter how much high quality learning goes on from September to June, every year the gap widens. This summer in our community, we are teaming up with the King County Library System, nonprofit groups and partners, such as the United Way, to keep our kids reading. You can find helpful information at your local library or online at letsreadkingcounty.org. This site has hundreds of book recommendations for children and information about free reading activities at local libraries. Thanks for watching and have a great summer.